Hello, and thank you for joining us. Today, we will be discussing securing Amazon Workspaces environments. My name is Andrew, and I'm a specialized solutions architect for end-user computing here at AWS. I'm accompanied by Chris, who is a senior specialized solutions architect for end-user computing, as well as Subra, who is a senior global partner solutions architect. Today's agenda will start by taking you through how Amazon Workspaces can help your business not only mitigate the undifferentiated heavy lifting of standing up virtual desktop infrastructure, but also how you can use this turnkey solution to streamline your end user experience as a whole. We will then continue with a technical overview on how workspaces operate from an architectural standpoint. Subra will then take you through the options when integrating work workspaces with Active Directory. He will then go over and take you through all our current security options with the service, as well as how to encrypt your workspaces environment with the Key Management Service, or KMS. Chris will then take over to discuss the Workspaces Streaming Protocol, or WSP, and the features that come with that. He will then continue with discussing access management relating to workspaces, as well as best practices when logging and auditing your environment. Lastly, we will finish with a Q&A session. Let's get started. Before we get into a technical overview, I want to first go over some recent data captures that show how valuable workspaces can be in industry today. In 2020, we all needed to react quickly to shift to work from home. Practically overnight, almost all non-essential workers had to be set up securely to connect from home and to perform the tasks their role requires. Fast forward to now, we have been operating this way for going on a year and the panicked work from home phase is over. With vaccines picking up momentum, we have finally started to inch back to normalcy. This has shifted our conversations with customers to be more forward thinking, opposed to the proactive thinking we saw in the beginning of the pandemic. My customer conversations have been very consistent with the results of the study conducted by PwC that you can see on this slide. 83% of US executives say that they are heading to some sort of hybrid working environment and more than one in 10 are looking to get up, give up their office space entirely. This next visual shows that executives really mean it too. As you can see, 72% are increasing their investment in tools for virtual collaboration, and 70% are increasing their investment in IT infrastructure to secure virtual connectivity. This focus on securing IT infrastructure is what I would like to talk about today. This modern approach to work presents several challenges for IT because of all the variables that come into play. For example, they need to support many device types, maintain legacy applications while also modernizing with next generation capabilities, providing an easy experience for their employees, all while ensuring corporate applications and data is secure and everything is staying cost optimized. Unfortunately, the traditional approaches to supporting end users is falling short Procuring and maintaining desktops and laptops is expensive, and it underutilizes hardware that often sits idle. VDI showed promise, but it doesn't scale. It's capital intensive and expensive to maintain, and inevitably delivers a poor user experience. In addition to this, bring your own device introduces security and support risks that often aren't acceptable, are too expensive for IT. The four main pain points we hear from our customers are, the on-prem infrastructure to support these workloads is too costly, the application management is too complex, and bring your own device causes a large array of security problems. And even if everything is configured correctly, the end users are still stuck with a poor user experience. Let's begin to dive in on how Amazon Workspaces addresses these barriers. With Workspaces, we are able to take advantage of all the benefits AWS provides. Firstly, you can leverage our global infrastructure, which allows you to quickly provision workspaces all around the world while still abiding by the same agile pay-as-you-go model. All of the benefits provided by our core services, such as EC2, EBS, and VPC Direct Connect are also inherited by workspaces. These inherited benefits have already solved many of the previously mentioned barriers, as well as offer many of the characteristics you wanna see in a global and user computing infrastructure. Let's walk through some common use cases where customers have had success migrating to workspaces. 
With bringing your own device, the Workspace's client supports an array of end user devices, such as iPads, Android tablets, Macs, PCs, laptops, and Chromebooks. Mergers and acquisitions are exciting, but introduce IT hardship of joining two existing environments. Leveraging the benefits of workspaces, onboarding all of your newly acquired users is a simple task that offers a consolidated approach for administrators. Mobile workers need a secure way to access network resources. Workspaces offers that and more. I will be going further in depth on how secure connections are offered by workspaces in a few slides. Businesses need a flexible infrastructure to meet their current demand. Temporary workers typically used during peak season result in a temporary spike in usage. In a traditional environment, this causes a large upfront capital expense in idle, depreciating resources when peak season is over. Workspaces offers an agile, pay-as-you-go solution that allows you to align your IT spend directly with the business's need. Now, I don't want to steal Subaru's thunder on encryption options with workspaces, so I'll save that topic for later in the presentation. Development, training, and demo environments can be quickly spun up and provided to your users. When the resources are no longer needed, you simply get rid of them and stop the pay-as-you-go meter from running. Lastly, you'll get all the critical compliance requirements on workspaces because it is built on the compliant infrastructure of AWS. Let's quickly touch on a few workspaces success stories from this previous year. When the COVID-19 pandemic began, and countermeasures required many employees to begin working from home in early 2020, the Fox Corporation needed a reliable cloud-based solution that would enable them to deploy and customize over 5,000 remote desktops. They were able to deploy all 5,000 after just one to two weeks of testing. They immediately saw benefits from the flexible scalability and the improved security posture compared to a traditional VPN. Amazon was put in a similar position at the beginning of the pandemic. They were able, able to quickly scale at a rate of 3,000 workspaces a week to meet 25,000 remote worker requirement. This rapid response allowed them to onboard new users in minutes instead of months. It also reduced demand on IT support through the act of enabling self-service capabilities. From a cost standpoint, Amazon estimates that their expected annual saving, savings with this de deployment was more than $17 million. Now that we have covered the benefits of deploying workspaces, let's dig into how workspaces operate from a technical perspective. One of the biggest things that makes workspaces unique in the industry is the fact that it's a managed service. What is a managed service? Well, when you're deploying on AWS infrastructure, we take all of the undifferentiated heavy lifting of physical hardware out of the picture. With a managed service, we take the underlying resources out of the picture too. This is a way for you to focus on what you want to deliver to your users and not how you're going to deliver it. As you can see on this slide, the underlying resources, the EC2 instance and EBS volumes are within a managed VPC. This then begs the question, how is this workspace able to communicate with your VPC's network resources? Well, as you can see at the bottom, an Elastic Network Interface, or ENI, is provisioned in the customer account and is attached to the workspace's underlying EC2 instance. There is also another ENI, referred to as ETH0, which lives in the management VPC. This ENI is what allows your users to securely connect to their workspace without the need of VPN. Let's dive into what this looks like at a more macro level. On this slide, I'm going to take you through how the connection process plays out with Amazon Workspaces. First, your user will enter their credentials and maybe an MFA code to the Workspaces client. The client will then initiate a TLS version 1.2 connection for authentication, which is all SSL traffic on port 443. The public facing Authentication Gateway will then evaluate this request and give it to the respective directory that the workspace is tied to. In this case, it is an AD connector pointed at an on-premises corporate active directory. As you can see, see on step 6A, your domain controllers will evaluate this auth request as any other, and if successful, will return a Kerberos ticket back to the gateway. 
If MFA is enabled, that will also be evaluated during this step. This ticket is then used to initiate a PC over IP AES 256 bit encrypted streaming session to the customer's workspace EAT0 that I mentioned on the previous slide. This architecture is how your user can securely gain access to your environment anywhere with an internet connection. Let's now talk about the VPC considerations pertaining to workspaces. In this VPC diagram, our workspaces are running in private subnets behind a NAT gateway that lives in public subnets. Workspaces require two subnets that are in separate availability zones to ensure resiliency. You will also notice that the directory services component, in this case an AD connector, was also provisioned in the private subnets. Each AD connector can have different directory level settings, such as what organizational unit will store the workspace's computer objects. In this diagram, two different AD connectors were deployed to accommodate two different business units. These directories are most likely pointed at separate organizational units so that administrators can apply group policy objects pertaining to the respective business unit. Please note, subnets cannot be changed once they are configured. This means that you will need to properly forecast your workspaces adoption by asking yourself questions like, how many workspaces will you need over time? What is the expected growth? What types of users will you need to accommodate? How many Active Directory domains will you connect? And so on. Let's quickly talk about workspaces security groups, and then I'll hand it over to Subra to cover directory services integrations. When you register a directory to be used for workspaces, a default security group is created to be applied to every workspace that is created under that directory. This allows administrators to add stateful rules to a single security group, which will be inherited by all the respective workspaces. Please note, this security group is a hard dependency of the service, so don't delete it. You also can attach an additional security group at the directory level to apply both security groups to all workspaces under that directory. Also, since the ENI is in your account, you can manually add additional security groups just like you can with any other ENI within your environment. This concludes the technical overview for workspaces. Subra will now talk about how Active Directory can be integrated with Amazon Workspaces. Subra, the floor is yours. Thank you, Andrew. So from what Andrew has covered so far, we know that Amazon Workspaces uses a directory to store and manage information for your workspaces and users. That's great. Let's discuss how you can manage uh, directories for Amazon Workspaces and what options do you have? There are three options and we can use one or more of them based on the use case or scenario. Let's consider the first scenario. You already have an active directory running on-premises. How do you integrate workspaces with it? Answer is active directory connector. This is basically a directory gateway that proxies your directory request to your on-premises uh, active directory. You could also use this if you want to connect into an Active Directory that you are running on AWS. One thing to note about this AD connector though is it does not work as a standalone directory. It has to integrate with uh, a backend uh, Active Directory. Now let's consider the second scenario. You want to use uh, a managed Active Directory service and does AWS offer one? Answer is of course, yes. It is uh, called AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory. It's actually a full implementation of Microsoft AD offered as a managed service. When we say managed service, basically host monitoring and recovery, data replication, taking snapshots and performing the software updates are all taken care by uh, AWS for you. This can act as your standalone AD for your workspaces need, or you can create a trust relationship between this AD and your on-premises uh, domain controller. Now, let's consider a third scenario. What if I want to run a small scale deployment of workspaces, maybe for a POC? Your answer is simple AD. Simple AD is based on Samba 4 and it's totally free. It's great for uh, running your POCs and proof of technologies. 
but probably may not cut uh, for the need of enterprise, like in case of scalability or control that you want to see in a full-blown workspaces deployment. Besides these options we discussed here, in case if you want to run your managed AD in federation with your existing AD, there are a couple of things you need to remember. One is you can have domain controllers running on on-premises or in the cloud. You would uh, essentially use either AD connectors or AD integration approach to link with your uh, domain controller. Also, you'll deploy your domain controllers and uh, global catalog servers in the VPC in a highly available configuration. Make sure you set these sites and uh, subnet costs appropriately so that any queries coming from the uh, AD connector get routed to the appropriate AD and they respond back uh, with a good response. You don't want any of uh, your requests performing either poorly or timing out because AD is querying over servers across the van. Now let's consider another scenario. You want to use Amazon Workspaces, but you want to manage your own Active Directory by yourself on AWS. Then you may question, can I still integrate uh, my Amazon Workspaces with uh, AD? Yes, of course, again. In this case, you are responsible for deploying and managing your Active Directory. You can think of this option as somewhat like extending your directory to uh, AWS Cloud. And it's usually deployed in a shared VPC so that it can be used as an identity domain for using other AWS services. Here is an architectural view on how you can do this. On the right-hand side, you have your AD deployed in two subnets under a shared services VPC. On the left-hand side, you have your uh, Workspaces VPC with AD connectors cohabiting with uh, Amazon Workspaces in those uh, respective subnets. These AD connectors essentially proxy all directory requests to your centralized AD uh, running in the uh, shared VPC. Uh, and this is accomplished through uh, the VPC peering. While this architectural view uh, is shown with AD running on your own uh, compute or EC2 instances. This architecture is applicable if you'd like to leverage uh, AWS managed active um, directory. On a side note, uh, if you're planning to deploy AD on EC2, uh, instead of using the managed AD, there's a quick start uh, for active directory domain services on AWS. This, has, uh, this covers a couple of scenarios, like uh, deploying a new uh, AWS cloud-based uh, Active Directory, uh, which you want to manage yourself, and extending your existing on-premises AD into AWS, and deploying AD with uh, AWS Directory Service. So we have seen uh, various scenarios and options. So what are the key design considerations for using Workspaces and Active Directory? A workspace is always associated with a specific Amazon VPC and the AWS directory service, which you have used to create that workspace. Any of the uh, AWS directory services, whether it's AD connector or Microsoft managed AD or simple AD, require two subnets to operate for resiliency, as Andrew mentioned uh, in one of his slides, each in a separate uh, availability zone. Since a workspace is tied to a directory, uh, which in turn resides in one of the two subnets, uh, a workspace essentially, you can think of living in one of the two subnets. Now let's consider the scenario where you have a large scale deployment of uh, uh, workspaces. In those cases, it's always good to logically group uh, user personas and place their corresponding workspaces in uh, separate subnets. For example, uh, you, if your enterprise has two types of uh, worker personas, full-time workers and part-time workers, right? In case of full-time workers, uh, they may need full access from anywhere. Uh, for part-time workers, such as consultants and contractors, uh, they should have only restricted access from the inside of a corporate network, right? In those cases, um, or in, for those uh, personas, group policies are going to be completely different. The nature of their access to various systems is different. 
So basically what we recommend in those cases is to use separate subnets and associate them with uh, AD connectors, link them uh, to the main AD hosted in the shared services VPC. And some of the rules to remember, um, a directory spans uh, exactly two subnets. You can uh, have multiple directories in one VPC and each directory has its own uh, registration code. Uh, also note that a directory service can be separated from the workspaces um, subnets by use of uh, AD connectors. You don't need to have uh, um, ADs running in the same subnet. You can have them separate subnet and use the AD connectors to connect into. Now let's get into uh, the security and uh, encryption aspects. Security is uh, job zero at uh, AWS. What it means, it's more important than any number one priority that we have. AWS wants to ensure your workspaces are secure. Uh, since they are deployed within uh, Amazon Virtual Private Network, uh, we can securely provide access to a persistent and encrypted storage volumes, which are integrated with the uh, AWS Key Management Service. When I say key management service, it's a fully managed service that uses highly scalable hardware and software to provide uh, you with the uh, encryption keys. And uh, uh, and this KMS is scaled for uh, the needs of uh, a cloud. As far as workspaces are concerned, everything is done on AWS cloud. Workspaces client does not store any of your user data on the local device. This improves your security posture while reducing your uh, blast radius or overall uh, risk surface area, if you will. Amazon Workspaces support um, encryption of both root volume and user volumes. Let's look into how do you keep your workspaces secure with the latest uh, uh, patches or security patches or updates, right? You have two options here. You can configure your workspaces uh, to be updated by Amazon Workspaces uh, service during a regular maintenance window, or you can update them using your own patch management process, if you will. For patching applications on workspaces, uh, you can use automatic update services provided, or you can follow the recommendations uh, for installing updates uh, by your uh, application vendor. Now, coming to third-party security solutions, uh, AWS Marketplace offers a variety of enterprise security solutions, including antivirus and endpoint security um, from the vendors such as uh, Symantec, Kaspersky. You can install your choice of uh, antivirus software on your user's workspaces. Uh, it's not that you had to get it from a marketplace. The plus bundle option uh, that's available um, offers users access to antivirus software. If you choose to install your own antivirus software, please ensure you have explicit allows for all workspaces dependent program files. Now, you want to protect your data in uh, transit and reduce the risk of uh, unauthorized access uh, or loss by implementing the right set of controls. Let's look at how we can protect the data that goes from your workspaces client to workspaces running in AWS Cloud. Amazon Workspaces Client uses port 443 for all authentication and session related information and port 4172 um, for uh, PC or IP port, and for pixel streaming for uh, a given workspace. Uh, traffic to port 443 uses a TLS for encryption, whereas uh, pixel streaming on 4172 uses uh, AES 256-bit encryption for communication between the client and uh, Ethernet Zero of the workspaces via streaming gateway. Now let's look at how do we protect the data between workspaces VPC and your on-premises uh, networks. We can achieve this by setting up a site-to-site -site VPN connection. Um, by doing so, like, uh, you, you set up encryption in transit uh, using standard IPsec protocols with uh, either AES-128 or AES-256 symmetric encryption keys, SHA-1 and uh, SHA-256 for integrity hash and Diffie-Hellman uh, groups using uh, perfect uh, forward secrecy. Now, what if your applications in your workspaces want to access AWS services? Can they do so without going through public internet? Answer is yes. Uh, this is where we, uh, AWS VPC interface endpoint integration comes into picture. 
using VPC interface endpoint, uh, you can provide secure connections within the AWS network between the workspaces and your EPC without going through uh, public internet. Lastly, security groups, as Andrew covered, they offer an additional layer of security by acting as a virtual firewall for your workspaces um, with the rules that control both inbound and outbound traffic. It's very important for enterprises to secure and protect endpoints against uh, zero-day exploits, malicious attacks, and inadvertent data leakages. Starting with the TLS encrypted logins, all workspaces traffic is encrypted. No user credentials are transmitted in clear text at any time. Now, implementing MFA is critical, right? Um, Amazon workspace sup uh, Workspaces supports MFA through AD connector and a customer-owned radio server, such as RSA, Gmail. These uh, radio servers can be running on-premises or within your VPC on AWS. If you are deploying a new radio server solution, uh, there are several implementations exist in the industry today, such as uh, free radius and cloud services such as uh, DO security. You can also restrict access uh, with the certificate-based authentication, allowing only trusted uh, devices with the valid certificates. If the client fails the verification, then Workspaces blocks the attempts to log in or reconnect from the device. If your users need to go through a proxy because they have a lockdown uh, device or a restrictive network, proxy as access is also supported for uh, the desktop clients. So how do we restrict uh, uh, workspaces beyond credentials and certificates? This is where IP-based access controls come into picture. Organizations can limit access to uh, the provisioned workspaces coming from a specific IP range. And this is where the IP access control group acts as a virtual firewall controlling the IP addresses from which users are allowed to access uh, the workspaces. This is extremely useful uh, if you want to uh, restrict the access only from trusted locations or office locations, if you will. You can also use them to enforce uh, the access via IPs that only route through direct connect link connection. Now, uh, the multi-factor authentication, it adds an additional layer of security during authentication process. Implementing MFA requires you to use either AD connector or Microsoft AD, and your radius server running either on-premises or uh, in AWS Cloud. You can see a list of various radius servers supported here on this slide, like Gmail to Interest, RSA, et cetera. And make sure uh, your MFA implementation is highly available to avoid any single point of failures. And as you see here on the slide, like MFA support is available for clients running on various platforms, such as Windows, Mac, Linux, et cetera. And MFA is also supported when you're uh, using web access through Firefox and uh, Chrome browsers. As we all know, denial of service attack is a deliberate attempt to make your website or application unavailable to users uh, by flooding it with uh, uh, network traffic. To avoid such attacks and limit the impact of failed password attempts, Amazon Workspaces client will display a capture after five unsuccessful uh, login attempts. You need to enter the CAPTCHA code correctly before authentication is uh, retried. Now, coming to compliance and certifications, uh, they are very critical for uh, regulated industries such as healthcare and financial services. AWS supports more security standards and compliance certifications and provides more auditing and reporting than any other public cloud offerings out there. You can read a sample list uh, on this slide. Uh, SOC 123, ISO 9001, and so on and so forth. And Amazon Workspaces is uh, HIPAA eligible. If you have um, an executed business associate agreement uh, with AWS, you can start using Amazon Workspaces to deploy HIPAA compliant cloud desktops that access um, protected health information, PHI. Also, Amazon Workspaces is PCI DSS level one compliant. With this uh, compliance, Amazon Workspaces can be used to utilize applications and files that contain sensitive cardholder data. Now, Workspaces volume encryption. As we covered, um, Workspaces allows encryption of both root and user volumes. It is integrated with the AWS Key Management Service, KMS. This integration en enables you to encrypt the storage volumes 
um, using uh, the customer master keys from KMS. This ensures that data is encrypted, whether it's at rest or during disk I.O. to the volume or when snapshots created from that volume. When you launch a workspace, you specify uh, to encrypt this root volume and user volume. Note that you can encrypt only at the launch time. The first time when you launch the workspace from Amazon Workspaces console, uh, work, Workspaces automatically creates an AWS managed CMK in your account. You can select this uh, AWS managed CMK to encrypt the user and root volumes of your uh, workspace. With that, I complete my part of the presentation. I will hand it over to Chris, who is going to walk us through the rest. Chris, take it away. Thanks a lot, Subra. I'm here to talk to you about the Workspaces streaming protocol. At AWS, 90% of our roadmap is based on customer feedback. And since the launch of Amazon Workspaces, we've seen increased demand for increased security features, such as smart card authentication, and the ability to contain audio and video data streams inside the virtual operating system. To improve our ability to control development and delight our customers, we've invested in the development of the Workspaces streaming protocol. In developing a proprietary protocol, AWS is better positioned to innovate based on direct customer feedback, delivering more frequent and targeted features. WSP decouples the streaming protocol from the Amazon Workspace. This allows WSP to offload metric analysis and codec selection, as well as encoding from the workspace surface itself, using specialized microservices on AWS optimized endpoints for global distances and unreliable networks. This decoupling further improves customer awareness of traffic patterns, allowing you to increase real-time observation and alerting based on layered security policies, whether inherited as Suber described, from your existing Active Directory domains or in tandem with dynamic AWS security groups, IAM roles, and network access control lists. With the Workspaces streaming protocol, AWS adds the ability to utilize common access card and personal identity verification smart cards. The WSP codecs also offer true performance adaptability in response to real-time changes in each user's session. This allows WSP to provide a consistent user experience across global distances, even from unreliable networks. With fewer disconnects and reconnects, customers can reduce unnecessary login attempts, possible file locks, or hung sessions, which are common problems in many VDI solutions today. By improving session stability, Customers can reduce operational noise around credential management. And at AWS, we architect both in terms of features and patterns, looking for opportunities to improve in both domains. WSP is improved by quick, independent microservice enhancements in the cloud. This enables frequent feature and performance enhancements, which require fewer updates to your Amazon workspaces. As a managed service, Workspaces is designed to reduce the operational burden of end-user computing. And in developing the Workspaces streaming protocol, AWS offers the same turnkey access to end-user computing, extending our proprietary architecture down to the protocol level. This improves our development agility and reaction time, both to customer feedback and any potential security threats. As Workspaces offers both a PC over IP and now a Workspaces streaming protocol experience, customers, of course, open with the question of which to use and in what circumstances. When considering PC over IP, it's important to factor whether you are already leveraging Teradici-based zero client devices. Customers who are already enjoying the security of this true zero client access will need to maintain use of the PC over IP protocol. The Workspaces streaming protocol allows you to unlock smart card access. This has historically been a blocker for a number of regulated and federal agencies. We are happy to announce this interoperability with the Workspaces streaming protocol. And as I mentioned earlier, this also unblocks the ability to encapsulate bi-directional audio and video within the endpoint session. From a network telemetry standpoint, this simplifies monitoring and where your traffic is going. 
Now I'd like to take you through how access management, logging, and auditing help you maintain adherence to your particular cloud governance framework. Subra and Andrew talked about best practices around technical and authentication patterns with AWS virtual private cloud architectures. Now I'd like to talk to you about how the AWS account structure is just as critical to developing a more agile, distributed security posture in the cloud. Having a single account is far less agile and secure. From a security perspective, a multi-account strategy will provide segregation of public and private facing services, allowing you to differentiate the risk profile for your various cloud computing needs, data classification, and also determination of consumer of service. More fundamentally, segregated VPC and account structures allow you to reduce blast radius. If an account is compromised, it is less likely to affect other workloads or spider out into the rest of your architecture. Single account structures also require complex IAM and security controls to support further federation of duties within your account. And finally, it would require a complex tagging nomenclature, essentially to tag every instance instead of having a tag at the parent level of the VPC or directory. This makes security control and reporting far more difficult than it needs to be. AWS tags allow customers to assign metadata to their AWS resources. Each tag is a simple label consisting of a customer-defined key and an optional value that will make it easier to manage, search for, and filter resources, whether leveraging API calls or direct user interface reporting on the AWS console. There are no inherent types of tags, and so this enables customers to categorize resources as they see fit, whether by purpose, owner, security profile, or other criteria. This is a key element to an effective cloud governance framework. While it allows you to also simplify budgeting, application correlation, and other business functions, it is critical to maintaining consistent access control and security observation over your environment. Please see the link at the bottom of this slide for more information on AWS tagging strategies. As with many AWS services, Amazon Workspaces leverages CloudWatch our alerting and metric system that gives you more visibility into the health of Amazon workspaces and allows you to see when users are connecting over time. We provide average, sum, min and max alerts and metrics, which customers can export in designs of their own choosing. Using this matrix of available metrics, customers can aggregate the session disconnects, launch times, and successes and failures observed in their environment. This generates over time a good heat map as to potential problems, whether at distance or with particular business units in accessing their Amazon workspaces and other resources in the directory. As a second step, customers can establish CloudWatch events, which can key on metrics that will allow them to view, search, download, or analyze logins to your workspaces. This also enables you to monitor WAN IP addresses, the operating systems users are accessing your environment from, as well as ID and directory ID information that again can be aggregated to help you see in real time visually what your environment looks like. You'll learn where, when, and how your users log into and access their workspaces and set up automated actions based on alerts of your choosing. At a higher level, Workspaces also participates in CloudTrail. CloudTrail is AWS's record of API calls targeting your resources. Amazon Workspaces API calls can also be correlated and analyzed using CloudTrail metrics and logs. If you create a trail, you can enable continuous delivery of this information to an Amazon S3 bucket which can include events for workspaces and also be used as a data store to be analyzed whether in real time by fire hoses or in separate analysis frameworks available through other AWS services. If you don't configure a trail, you can still view the most recent events in the CloudTrail console 
under event history. Please see the link at the bottom of this slide for more information. Finally, in addition to these metrics, many organizations may want to gather end user metrics to ensure and validate the user experience. These are not available by default in CloudWatch. However, with the introduction of the Amazon Kinesis agent for Microsoft Windows, customers can configure an extensible on guest agent, which can analyze any log of your choosing, including Windows logs at the operating system level, CPU, disk storage, log on duration, and session response time can all be queried at your choosing. Kinesis is the central aggregator of these advanced metrics, allowing customers to develop more practical and detailed analysis of their environment. As Andrew and Subra have explained, Amazon Workspaces is a secure turnkey solution for desktop as a service cloud computing with AWS. With SSL and AES-256 encryption of your network traffic, compatibility with multi-factor authentication, certificate authentication, and Active Directory security principles, Amazon Workspaces provides customers a wide range of security features to harden your desktop compute environment in the cloud. It's been our pleasure to discuss Amazon Workspaces security features and best practices today. Please refer to the links shown on this page to begin or extend your journey with Amazon Workspaces. Now, we hope you have time to participate in a moderated Q&A session with us and members of our technical field community. Lastly, please look for a customer satisfaction survey that will be distributed to all attendees of this session. We really thank you for your time today and hope you'll be delighted by Amazon Workspaces.